Okay, hello. I'm back. We are, I forgot to mention in the last video that we are switching to every two weeks instead of every week because I feel like that's more sustainable for me. So last week I flipped through all the sketches in my sketchbook that I made over the two weeks and I reluctantly did not talk about them and I thought we could talk about them this week along with some sketches from this week which there I don't think there's I think there's only one so I'm not someone who fills my sketchbook like from page one to the to page yada 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 I'm a flip flip and see where you land kind of person um so we're gonna talk through sketches from last week in the order that they appear in the sketchbook not necessarily in chronological order of how they were made okay also wearing my judith that i finished pattern will be coming out soon if this video comes out when i think it will the pattern is out already or will be coming out just look on my instagram at holly knits to see if this has been released or not it'll be on ravelry and i'll probably also put a a link in the description if the pattern is out so that's all i'm saying so this sketch is water because i had an idea that i wanted to paint and work out i wanted to paint water with gouache just to see if I could try to paint water because I've never painted water before that's a lie I have painted water before but not well so I was trying to paint just see try water again this is supposed to be the sky but like it is let's see if we can there we go not much going on with the sky this was I want to paint water because I would like to paint a painting of Jesus walking on water and I've never painted water before and I wanted to just try and see if I can you know make water do the watery things and this is what we came up with mind you I still don't know how to use gouache so this is as good as it's gonna get it's not terrible though okay what's the second one second one if we can see that this was an idea for something that was this was the idea for that painting that I was painting in the last video that I have since stopped painting because after that I meant to update you all on these things but I didn't sorry I no longer paint in that painting i've never painted hands before or really drawn hands before as you can tell and it didn't work out so i have to restart that painting um i actually wanted it to be a gift for someone so i can't give someone a gift that's half made and so we had this idea and you know like the priest and the hands and the host you know catholic stuff this page we have um lazarus and jesus in the tomb just chatting it up just having a nice chat and then this one is jesus and lazarus in the tomb as well i've had an idea to paint that scene from the gospels of lazarus for over a year and I have not quite landed on the composition that I want yet or the f mood or feeling that we're going for. So, um, and then this is this, but little and small. Um, so this is like after he's raised from the dead and Jesus is just like talking to him about like, I don't know, they're just chatting. Obviously they're friends, like. So they're talking about whatever they need to talk about. Um, yeah. I 
of the two of them, I like, okay, I messed up. This is Lazarus and Jesus at home. So like they go back to, to Lazarus's house and have dinner or something. I don't know. You know, he's got to get changed. He's got to find some clothes. You know, Jesus is chatting with him, telling him like what's going on. You know, he's asking questions. This one is in the tomb where they're just kind of gabbing and talking to each other. I'm not, I don't know which one I like more. That's the thing. I, and then I have a, like a third composition that I made last year that I like that too. It's similar to this one, but like Martha and Mary and the disciples are there as well. And I'm like, I don't know if I'm ready to paint a thousand and a half people. So that's this. And like, if you ever are interested, this is more of the idea of how I use my sketchbook. There's lots of writing and just like little tiny blips and blobs. That's kind of how I like to use my sketchbook, like this page, like working out an idea and then getting another idea and then like making some notes and stuff. So that's kind of how I use it. What do we have next? Next we have this sketch from Mass. And then we have this one also from Mass. So this was the Sunday both like this was once this was a Sunday and then this was the next Sunday. So the beginning of the video, end of the video, essentially. Um I love this one. So I've been watching PBS. I'm a PBS person. And so in the day on Thursdays in my area, in the Detroit area, um, on the create version of PBS, there was a show called Pocket Sketching with Kath Macaulay, I think. Um, I will actually put like the website that's listed on the show under in the description. She is great. I just love watching her, but she introduced me to this idea of like using your markers, your pens, like pens you use to sketch and like taking the lines of your pen, like having your pen be wet and then you put water over it to get value. She does that a few times on a few episodes and I'm like, I liked that idea. So I took it. This is when the priest and the deacon are kind of like, and here's the deacon kneeling and then there's a priest and like there's the Eucharist and him reading the prayers and he's got his hands in the air. They're at similar moments. Um, and the reason that I sketch during that particular part of the mass is because it's my favorite part of the mass, obviously. But also I have a really bad habit of picking at my cuticles. That's why I keep my nails so short. I have a really bad habit of like tearing my cuticles. And so I bring my sketchbook so I can sketch and pay attention. I used to bring my knitting so I can like knit and pay attention at the same time. But I've since started using uh, every, sacred sun every sacred Sunday journal. So like I only need, anyway, I also like the idea of like time like this is one Sunday and this is the next Sunday and like the idea of place and time I love that so I loved this came out spectacularly I was trying to do that here but then I was like I have to redo it because my perspective is weird so yeah I love sketching churches and taking photographs of churches it's a thing Okay, so I've seen this. These are my oil pastels, and then these are all the colors of the oil pastels. And then on the bottom, this is new. I took all the colors that I really enjoyed and really loved and created this palette of colors that I want to play around with. These are, I'm noticing, like, I am gravitating towards, like, cool colors. Like, you know, I never really knew yellow ochre to be such a cool color. But next to um, ultramarine blue, it's, like, really cool. And we have, like, 
the warm with some warm colors and we've got this kind of like coolish warm color pale orange love that but I'm wondering if like this palette needs something to make it pop like maybe like the pink would be like a wonderful addition but I like the pale orange a lot and obviously I like the olive green color but these are my oil pastels and I've never used oil pastels before and I really want to get into them but I'm having a lot of fun with just pen and ink pen drawings and then like taking the value from there so love this and I, I would like to use these colors and I love this palette of colors especially these together I wonder what we could do with that but yeah this was just I wanted to have something to do while I shamelessly watched Bob Ross if you didn't know now you know on the weekend starting on Friday I think at 10 a.m. the Bob Ross YouTube channel live streams I think two or three seasons over the weekend until like Monday at like 10 a.m. so if you ever just want something to turn on in the background on the weekend while you're sketching or cleaning Bob Ross highly recommend yes like I said I'm a PBS person so which one's first we have this one so back to the idea of using your sketchbook as um, a place to plan things. This, I just added this morning. This was not on the page. But this whole thing, this whole page, I'm going to go into like the specifics. This is a painting of Jesus at the Pillar. And then this is the Immaculate Heart and the Sacred Heart paintings that I think I'm going to scrap this idea for something else, combining both of them together. But I'm not sure how yet. We'll get there. We'll talk about it, okay? I promise. This Jesus of the Pillar, I don't know if we're ready for this one. We're not going to talk about it because there's a lot happening here. Um, I'm a huge fan of the Stations of the Cross and one of my goals in life is to paint all 14 stations so I had this idea which would be separate from that idea so I have to scrap I have to come back to this but this is me planning my artist rewriting my artist statement I was in bed one night thinking and I just had this idea for like how to rework my artist statement and I'm like well if I'm gonna rework my artist statement why am I reworking my artist statement and I'm like is it time to get my MFA I don't know so I've been stewing on that all week um, and here is a list of things that I want to put in my portfolio and the ones that are asterisked and s or starred are paintings I want to make for my portfolio things that I would like to make like like the Jesus walking on water and Jesus in the wilderness and I had this crazy idea for a seven sorrows pieta if you know what that is, let me know how you feel about that. Because I thought that idea was wild. Um, thank you. Shout out to the Holy Spirit. Anyway, so we have that. And then lastly, we have just a little tiny sketch that I made from... Um, we're still... I was confirmed this Easter... And so we're still having like our OCIA class. And so I just made this little sketch. Um, not this past. There's a bee outside the window. The, not this past Tuesday, but the Tuesday before. So, yay. Because we don't have any footage from last week. But I thought I should go through the sketches. And um, here's... Another sketch from Mass, this is from this Sunday, and the perspective, again, got kind of wonky. And my pens had kind of dried, so they, there's not as much detail. I don't know if I'll keep sketching <laughs> the consecration, but I like, each, each sketch, each three of them are in a different, like, kind of location. So it's been kind of wonderful to see that. Um... Is there anything else? So, 
we're talking about this sketch is from the other video and this is a preliminary idea of Jesus in the wilderness which is something that I want to make so part of me is like I want to spend the summer like painting a bunch of things to build a portfolio of work for an MFA to apply to get an MFA so we'll probably talk more about that process as time goes on if I get in um the only reason that I'm like oh goodness I want to get my MFA is because everyone in my family is advancing their education at the moment so and they're all going to the same school like and so they I've looked it up and they do have an MFA program and I'm like I might as well just join the party I would love to get my MFA and be in that environment again so yeah I just want to show this one again because I just love it so much so that is what has been going on I just wanted to talk about those sketches um and an update on our t-shirt thing there's a lot of there's a lot more progress remember that when last time you saw this I had just started and like we've had like two weeks to work on this now um, and I haven't been working on anything else. Wow, this comes up so well on camera. Like, you can totally see the vision. In IRL, the contrast is, like, non-existent. So you can't see it as well. But, like, on the camera, you can totally see what we're going for. I think I'm going to leave this more as, like, a tank top vest moment. So I'm super excited about this. This is my first like truly like all over color work garment. And I have to admit, whoops, that it is kind of a lot to do color work all over. Um, I don't know if we're going to write a pattern for this. I have kept notes, so I could technically write a pattern for this. So we'll just have to keep going with that. That was a lot to update you all, but I didn't take any footage from last week. So I had to just verbally tell you everything that happened this week. Okay, good. So, is there anything else I need to chat to you about? Um, yes, I finished The Similarian. I think we talked about third, no. I finished The Cimmerillion. There we go. I always pronounce it wrong and I also finished this book about um I don't even know how to say that but we're gonna try Pierre Giorgio oh Pierre Giorgio Frassati I think is I'm not sure but he's going to be a saint next year and he died when he was 24 and I'm 26. So obviously in the young adult kind of land, his name comes up a lot as a saint to model yourself after. I read this book and I'm like, Giorgio Frassati, we need to be friends because I think we would have been friends in real life. I love everything this man stood for. Um, and so I also have Dorothy Day's autobiography. This is the book that I'm going to be picking up um, soon. I checked these books out from my church's library. And these cover my church's library. This is actually written by his sister. And so I'm going to read this next. I finished this. I checked this out on Tuesday. It is currently Tuesday. I flew through this. It feels like Pierre wanted to be my friend and I'm saying, yeah, we can be friends. <laughs> and we're gonna pick this up next. And I was reading Crime and Punishment, but I realized that now is not the time to be reading Crime and Punishment. So we're gonna pick up with our social justice saints because why not? We love a good, 
we love a good social justice saint. We do. <laughs> yes. I also have some other books that I checked out from the library. Let me find them. We wanted, I wanted to read some more poetry. So we have Mary Oliver's Blue Horses, which I've read a little bit of. Love this. And then this book was like right next to it in the library. Philip Levine Breath and love, been loving this so far. Partly because like I'm from Detroit and there's references to Detroit in the book and I was in the poetry and I was like not expecting that. So those are the things that I'm reading at the moment. Those are the things that I worked on. We have had really weird internet issues, so that sort of just like, I haven't been using the internet, so I haven't been knowing to update you all on things that are going on. So hopefully we'll get some more footage this week. This has been 20 minutes of me chatting. <sighs> all right, that's it, that's everything. You're all caught up and we're ready for another week of being creative, okay. Hey everybody, so I'm here to record a little bit of an outro and an update on some things that have been going on this week. I have don't have a lot of clips from this week either, so I kind of have to just talk you through things again. Um, I know you all like to keep up with what I'm reading, so I checked out some more books from the library only because when I was at the library on Sunday, I saw this book which is like the Pope Francis's life through history. And so I've started this. And so when we say like his life through history, it starts with like World War II, um, when he was like a little kid and he talked in, in the first chapters, he's talking about his relationship with his grandmother and how um, World War II affected his family, even though they're in Argentina, um, they are Italian immigrants and so like, the war definitely affects them and they're talking about it so I think it's gonna be really interesting to read it goes all the way up to like the pandemic and there was yeah there's literally it goes all the way up to the pandemic so we've got a lot to cover in such a little book um so check that out and you all remember I was gonna read crime and punishment but I returned it because I didn't quite feel like it was the time and so I checked out Notes from the Underground um, as just a sort of more of an intro into Dostoevsky's work. So I'm not tucking into such a big book um, like Crime and Punishment, which I definitely want to read. I guess in this moment, I have been reading a lot more. But I read, you know, Moby Dick and The Similorian or The Cimmerillion, and those are kind of longer books. And I flew through um, the life on Blessed Pierre, um, Pierre Giorgio Frassati. I flew through that. And so I guess I'm like interested in shorter books at the moment. And I'm interested in the life of holy people and people that I admire spiritually, like Pope Francis and Blessed Frassati. So um, yeah, that's in that world. We don't have any sketches from this week, sadly. Um, I just got a new phone and we had some internet issues and we had those sorted. So I didn't really do a lot of 
creative stuff this week more so just sort of ran through some ideas to prepare to work on building my portfolio possibly for an mfa but we'll get there we'll get through all that i want to update on this we had a little bit more progress this week um i'll pull it up closer that's kind of more of like what it looks like what in real life it's kind of bumpy and lumpy and kind of needs a good block but from a distance it looks great which is what i'm going for it's definitely perfect um <laughs> definitely exactly what i wanted and what i was looking for for this project um and lastly you saw that I was gessoing a board um, outside and I had to come in because it started thundering. So that's no good. Um, this is just a eight by 10 board cradled that you can buy from Blix for like $10, maybe $11 with shipping. I gessoed it myself and I just need to like, if you can see that, just need to like sand the edges and sand the surface. Try to be as smooth as possible with my gesso application, which I'm fairly good at, especially with boards. I like canvases, but I've found that I'm really enjoying boards because the way paints move on wood panel is buttery, you know, especially oil paints. You can um, blend your colors. It doesn't hold on to paint as well as much as a canvas does. so. I like to paint thin layers and so boards are really nice because they don't hold on to the paint as much as um, canvas. But it is also important to follow the rules on how to make your paintings more, to make your paintings last. So you know, fat over lean is really important with boards because there isn't that like, you know, you just it as a protective layer. So there isn't like a canvas that you know holds the paint as much so you have to be you gotta you gotta think about how these things work this is not for mfa potential portfolio this is for something else and we'll get into that over the next two weeks as we paint and possibly do some more sketching so that is all i have for this video thank you all for watching and i hope that you all have had a good week pray that you all will have a good week and today is when I'm filming this is Pentecost. So happy Pentecost to all of you who celebrate and um, or however you want to celebrate. It's the end of it's Easter and we're moving in back into ordinary time. That's irrelevant to this conversation. But thank you all for watching. If you've made it this far, comment a watermelon emoji and um don't forget to like and subscribe and i'll see you all in two weeks bye